Second up in my series, uh, or a little mini series about how to beat every weapon in Brawlhalla is Lance. I feel like Greatsword may have been more requested, I mean depends on where you look, but I do want to be careful because Greatsword is getting some changes in January, I don't want that video just to instantly not be true anymore uh, because of certain changes. So I'm going to go over Lance first, or Lance next I should say. If you didn't watch the first one, that's totally okay. This is just a crash course, very casual style. Uh, I'm doing this live on stream, it's a one take type of video where I talk about every weapon's strengths, weaknesses, drawbacks, you know, where they cover, area of threat, uh, how they typically want to build up damage, how they typically want to knock you out, how they want to edge guard you, how they want to juggle you, and what you can do to play around those. So, Lance is one of the most common weapons that I see people talk about, I have no idea how to beat this, what do I do, any tips against Lance? So I figured rather than just answering every single one of those questions individually, I can make this video direct people to this, uh, to this one place and then I no longer have to spend like, you know, a ton of time answering that question over and over and over again, which, you know, I don't mind, it's just more convenient this way. So, let's talk about every single move on the Lance first. Sorry to interrupt, I just, uh, I always forget to say this, so if you, if, if you enjoy the videos, consider checking if you're subbed, no big deal. If not, uh, you know, it, it's free and it helps out a lot, so, yeah, thanks, sorry again. Let's talk about Enlight. So Enlight is a very, very strong move. Uh, what are its strengths? Speed is number one. It has unreactable startup. It is extremely quick, very difficult to punish. You throw it out and then you can instantly cover yourself. So this is the type of move that if you are playing against a Lance, uh, a Lance player and you see them throw this out and your brain immediately goes, oh, they whiffed. I need to try and punish them, uh, you're not gonna be able to do it unless you're positioned perfectly. Like if you're directly above them, for example, yeah, you're going to be able to get this punish. If you're in front of them, you're not going to be able to. So this is the kind of move that is often thrown out as a bait. And if you do get baited by it, that is something to keep in mind is that oftentimes you're not able to punish it. Another strength is its priority. If you notice that this hitbox, if I take a look at my hurtbox as an example, the amount of space in front of where I can get hit and where from this move or, or where this move covers, this is a good amount of distance. We call this a disjoint because the, the space where this hits is different from the space that I, I occupy. So that's another strength. It has some a, a good amount of range. Uh, what is what is some of its weaknesses? Well, number one, as we saw, it doesn't have vertical range. It also can't hit stacked. So if you're right on top of the lance, they can't hit you with this end line. It, it needs to hit a little bit in front. The other thing is that while it does kill, it only kills very, very late. So Lance's grounded killing power, this is pretty much the move on Lance that is going to kill grounded. I mean, this is the only move on Lance that can kill grounded, uh, and it kills pretty late. So those are some of the drawbacks. But other than that, this is almost this is like a 9 out of 10 move. It also strings into a, into downlight. So playing around uh, this Lance end light, what do you actually do? There's a couple things. So first, you can punish it from a 45 degree angle, something like a bow down air, something like a Lance down air. Uh, you can punish from the from that angle. You can punish it from a 90 degree angle directly downward like let's say this uh this dusk has spear and just downers me that's how you can hit it uh, you can also hit it f like in front if you have a wide range move there's only a couple moves that are actually able to beat this in a one-on-one -on -one, which is like blaster sare for example uh that's one so that's part of why blasters can sometimes do fairly well against lance is because they're one of the few weapons that can outrange it in certain scenarios um but a lot of the time this move is going to be thrown out like this on the ledge and you're going to be trapped and you're going to try and punish them and then you're going to get hit by this so i would say the number one counterplay against this end light a lot of the time is not to try and counterplay it and that sounds kind of weird right it's like oh just give up but that's not what i'm saying what i'm saying is instead of trying to punish the end light try and punish what they do afterwards because you know what if you can punish the end light go for it I, I, obviously you know you, you want the easiest option but a lot of the time you're not able to punish it so you want to punish what they do next maybe they end light and then instantly down light instead of thinking i need to punish this end light think i need to punish the down light do they do after the end light and that's what you go for or maybe they spot dodge think I need to punish the spot dodge. Maybe they jump, I need to punish the jump. You'll get whatever they're gonna do, or you'll get a good idea of what they're gonna do based on how they've played earlier in the match, you know, conditioning, or how other people tend to play uh, around their level, or, you know, uh, around the types, of, or around the meta, and everything like that. So that's the number one thing about Enlight. Quick TLDR is its strengths, speed, very difficult to punish, and the fact that it does KO. Weaknesses, it KOs pretty light, or pretty late, I should say. Uh, it doesn't have any vertical coverage, and, well, okay, I shouldn't say any vertical coverage because, you know, we'll see this and it'll hit in the air, but it, it doesn't have any vertical coverage, you know, directly on the racks, and it doesn't hit stacked. So those are the, the, the those are the things to keep in mind for that. Now, side light is Lance's main combo starter on the ground. It true combos into neutral air, and that's pretty much it. I mean, there's some really weird situations where you can get, you know, depending on bounces and stuff, other stuff. But generally speaking, side light into nair is the main option. Strengths of side light, priority and, and uh, distance are the main. 
Look at that distance. If you dash sidelight, you can cover almost like half the entire map with a moving hitbox. Uh, that strength, though, is also one of its weaknesses, because it means that this move commits you to certain movement. And why is that a, why is that a weakness? Well, I talked a little bit about that with, uh, with Axe, and we're going to get more, way more into that when we talk about how to avoid killing uh, or getting killed by Lance. But when you commit to a movement, it means that you need to be in a certain position in order to actually use it effectively. Because if you're right here, you can't sidelight because you're going to go too far, right? Uh, that's, th th that's part of the problem, right? You need to position yourself and then move into it or you need to move out of it, if that makes sense. So yeah, the, the movement of the Lance Silite means that you commit to a certain amount of distance every time you use it, which means that if the opponent is spacing outside of that distance, you're going right into their arms, right? Uh, what's another strength about it? I mentioned priority, uh, distance and priority. This move, again, has a big disjoint, so it's going to out-prioritize a lot of grounded attacks, meaning that not only is it very good for going halfway across the map and punishing, it's very good for going halfway across the map with a moving hitbox that won't be beaten by something like a sword sidelight, you know? If you both go towards each other at the same time, the lance will win 9 times out of 10. So that's why lance, is, uh, that's why lance sidelight is good. Another drawback, it doesn't have any vertical reach, so, as you're noticing, uh, kind of a trend about the Lance game, how do you punish it? You can punish it from above, you can punish it from a 45 degree angle, you can punish it from behind, uh, a lot of the time you just can't punish it from in front uh, unless you're spaced outside of the range. And spacing outside the range is a huge part of playing against Lance. It's how you play against every weapon, but Lance in particular, because of how it moves into almost every single hit. So that's Sidelight, again, how do you play around it? You kind of want to play above it. Now Lance Downlight is another one of those moves that's just super super quick, tends to punish you. If you get caught in the Lance Vortex, you know, I know your pain, I've been there. Or if you're a Lance Vortexer, I I've, I've been there too. This is one of those moves that will literally never knock you out, it will always just be a setup tool. Which means that you should know, you should learn what this sets up into. If you're always getting hit by this move and you're like, oh what do I do after, and then you just get hit by this afterwards, well next time, instead of doing that, you can uh... You can jump out of that, right? You don't have to get hit by this if you know that it's not actually a real thing, right? This may hit you depending on positioning or depending on your mental stack, but you don't have to get hit by it every time. That's kind of the point. So, uh, this downlight is most often seen as uh, a move to cover Lance after whiffing like this. They whiff the side air, you try and punch the side air, and they back up with this moving hitbox. Why is it good? It's a retreating move. Retreating moves are very good because they change your position instantly and then throw out a hitbox where you were. So if someone tries to punish you where you were, they're going to get hit by this. Meaning that they have to anticipate it and overshoot and then hit you. Uh, so that's why this is good. You can also dash impulse to have it as just an active hitbox. Uh, it's very active. It has a generous hitbox. So let's say this, this uh, Dusk is jumping. They still get kind of sucked in by it. You can GC it and have a falling hitbox. Um, why is it bad? Or, or what are the drawbacks of it, I should say? Because it's not a bad move at all. You'll notice a trend. It does not hit in the air. Like like I mentioned, like it can kind of anti-air if people fall into it, but it's not an anti-air move, right? Like if you if you throw this out, uh, you can just get hit from above. You can hit, get hit again from that 45 degree angle or that 90 degree angle. Um, so yeah, those are the drawbacks of downlight, of sidelight, and of endlight. Generally, the TLDR of Lance's ground game is that Lance's ground game is weak against air game. Now let's talk about Lance's air game, which. <laughs> You know, I'm sure is the main the main thing that people tend to struggle with against Lance. I mean, that's that's really where Lance shines, right? So let's talk about Nair. Nair is a 360 degree hitbox. It hits grounded. It has a hitbox behind. Uh, it, it's a juggle tool. The one thing about Nair that I, that is a uh, that's a little bit of a stinker is that you used to be able to use it and then just completely reverse your momentum and just free sail wherever you want to go, and now you no longer can do that. Which means that Nair is a slightly bigger commitment than it was before. Now it's not a huge commitment, let's say uh, you still do stuff like this or you still do stuff like this, you'll, you'll carry your momentum fine. Or if you a dash, do a dash jump and then hold back, you can freeze Nair in place and just have a floating hitbox like that. Uh, so that's very good. Obviously, you've been hit by this many times, uh, I've been hit by this many times, I've been juggle juggled to death, you've been juggled to death, what do you do about it? Well, one thing is that this doesn't have the most horizontal range, uh, so you can punish that. If they land on the ground with it, uh, let's say a, with a reverse nair, you can, uh, you can get into their zone. So let's say they're throwing out this nair, right? It actually won't hit if you're inside of the, inside of the circle. 
So if you're noticing someone is trying to do a lot of lance snares and you have a weapon like katars, you have a weapon like gauntlets, you have a weapon like bow, you're actually able to get inside the nair and then hit them for it. Which means that they're what they're gonna have to start doing is start moving with the nairs. Like like you notice with that dusk, instead of just doing this nair right here, I'm gonna have to move into the nair. And moving into the nair, like I just mentioned, with momentum, is more of a commitment now than it was before. So you do want to bait that out. Uh, a drawback of Nair is that it never kills, but that's also a strength because it means it can always set up into a kill, right? Um, so that, you know, uh, everything everything that's a strength is a drawback depending on the perspective and depending on the context. Um, so yeah, that's Nair. What are the weaknesses of it? It doesn't have a hitbox underneath. I mean, you can say that this is a, is a hitbox underneath because it still hits grounded, but directly below it's weak. And if you're able to, to hit them before it has this hitbox up here, it can't hit you directly above. It also doesn't have as much range as things like uh, Spear Dare, for example, you can Spear Dare through it, and it doesn't have a hitbox inside. Uh, so those are the main things. It also doesn't kill, so if you always get hit by this, and the only thing that they're threatening you with is Nair, even if you take a bunch of damage, you know, a bunch of damage is fine, because damage doesn't matter. What matters is that knockout right there. The only way you lose a game is you get knocked out three times. You don't lose a game by taking a billion damage, right? So that's the drawback of Nair. Now, Side Air, this is also one of those moves that tends to uh, be pretty oppressive depending on uh, how good you are at spacing it. This move, what are its strengths? Movement. A lot of the time, this move, you cannot punish it, depending on your weapon and depending on your positioning, if they just approach with it, right? Because of how far it moves you, let's say I'm trying to hit this Dusk, even if I overshoot, I'm kind of fine. Uh, so that's that's one of, the, one of the pros. Another pro is its priority. This thing beats out almost anything in a one-on-one -on -one scenario if, it, if they're going head-to-head. -head. Uh, knockout power, no matter when you hit this move, even if it's at the very, very end, it's going to have the max amount of force. So even if it hits at the very, very tip of the, uh, tip of the lance, and uh, you've spaced almost perfectly outside of it, it doesn't matter because... Okay, unless you teleport. It doesn't matter because the very last hit is the one with the force. It also deals a good amount of damage. It strings out of side light. Side light into side air is a good string knockout. Not a true combo. You can't dodge out of that. Um, but it's pretty good. It also carries you off stage a lot of the time. And Lance off stage, I mean, you know, I'm sure I'm sure you've been hit by the Lance blenders and, and everything like that, right? But uh, yeah, so those are the strengths of side air. What are the weaknesses of side air? What are some, some of the drawbacks? Well, strengths are weaknesses, right? So even though it has great priority horizontally, it also doesn't have, it, it doesn't have great priority vertically. So you can beat it from above, you can beat it from below. Um, another thing is that because it moves you, it is a commitment. So like I was mentioning with side light, like I can't side air right here and expect it to hit. I have to move into it, which means that it's more reactable than if I just threw it out right here right? Because for a move to be reactable, right? The, the thing that matters isn't just startup, because the startup right here is irrelevant, because it's never going to hit. For this cider to hit, I need to move into it and then use it, which means that that's a lot more reactable. It also means that there's some situations where your cider, like, you can't use it, because let's say this person, this dusk is like walking into me. If I use a cider right here, it's just going to go through them. So you need to position into it, which often people do by doing stuff like this, like they jump in and then they dodge back and then they use it. But then they blew their dodge, or they're making their approach more obvious, or they're throwing out something immediately and going to get punished for it. So the idea is that because side air moves, there are certain situations, depending on how you move, that you can make your opponent not want to throw it out, or be uncomfortable throwing it out, and so you are playing your game, and they are forced to play around that, uh, rather than the other way around. And I'll talk more about that in how to avoid damage and how to avoid knockouts. Down air is kind of similar. Uh, now this is the 45 degree angle move on the lance. It's kind of a setup tool. Uh, you'll, you'll, you know, you've probably gotten hit by stuff like this and like into one of these or a side light down air into side air and stuff like that. Now something important to know about down air is that there's different versions. So depending on how it hits, it, it'll hit at different angles. If you hit an aerial version, it tends to hit downward. If you hit a grounded version, it tends to prop you a little bit up. And so just learning those and learning uh, the, the different dodge windows and timings, you can turn on stun and training mode and stuff like that. Um, uh, the drawbacks of this move are very similar to side air. It's a movement commitment, and it is active for a little while. Act activity is good because it means that your hitbox is out, but it also means if you whiff, then you're uh, kind of in danger. The other thing is that because it's an offstage tool, it's a little bit of a commitment. Let's say you miss a dare here. Now you're significantly lower than you would be if you miss like a bow dare, for example, an orb dare. Uh, so that's that means that it's higher risk to go off stage with Lance with the dare than something like that. The upside of that means that if you land it, you can do stuff like that, and they're in prime position because you know if you actually hit them with it, they're the ones being carried off stage. And the lower they are off stage, the less op the less options they have. So playing around this down air, uh, being above it, spacing it, 
people often use this move just as a raw approach, which is actually fairly risky because if you miss this, you're in prime position to be punished. Uh, so yeah, this down air, the drawback is that you can punish it if it is uh, if it's spaced poorly, and it is a bit of a commitment. So let's talk about the last two moves: the grounded air or the <laughs> the grounded aerials. The uh, aerial heavy attacks, starting with ground pound. So Lance ground pound is a pretty good ground pound, but it does have one big problem, which is that when you press it, you go down a good amount of distance. Uh, and so the pro of this move is that it's pretty fast. It has a great amount of knockout power. Very good move. You know, very solid all around. The drawback is that it's pretty high risk. And so this is a super, super classic example of high risk, high reward. Which is why, uh, I mean, depending on which Lance players you play against, some some might just go crazy and just keep ground pounding off stage. But typically, you see Lance players ground pound less than other weapons like Gauntlets or, or Scythe or something like that because of how big of a commitment this is. Because if you whiff it, you're going down pretty low, and then you have to do something like this to recover. Um, you know, depending on your position. So pros are pretty straightforward: good amount of force, good amount of speed. Cons are pretty straightforward: you know, puts you in a bad position if you miss. Recovery is a little bit more complicated. Now, recovery is one of the best moves in the game, even though I just couldn't say that word for some reason. Uh, it has so much priority that uh, you will almost never win if you're trying to contest this as they're throwing it out. Like I've been mentioning, like in a one-on-one, -on -one, one move against one move, and, and they're kind of in a, a similar type of situation, that recovery will beat, beat out almost every other move in the game. So that's something to keep in mind. Now, one of the most common habits of Lance players that may be a little less experienced is when they get knocked off stage, they'll just fully charge this because it goes a good amount of distance than a recovery. Uh, and for, for that reason, a lot of people think that Lance's off stage game is terrible because you always just get weapon thrown or dared when you do this and then you die. But Lance actually has one of the best recovery, ti uh, recovery tip <laughs> tips, no, recovery kits in the game uh, because of the distance of side air, down air, and recovery. Lance is one of the single hardest weapons to gimp in all of Brawlhalla because of how much priority this recovery has, how much space this nair can cover, how much weapon throw space this has, and how much priority of the, the recovery has. Did I already mention that? I think that was the first thing I mentioned, but yeah. So, Lance Recovery Uncharged is one of the best moves in the game. It kills, it's one of Lance's uh, Lance's knockout uh, knockout moves, knockout potential. I, I just finished the Axe one, or the Axe one of these videos, so I've been speaking for the past like hour and a half, so I'm sorry uh, if I mess up my words a little bit. But yeah, it, it's a knockout move. Oftentimes people use it to, to read like this. Like, let's say you're holding in on your movement, they'll read you like that and they'll kill you. Uh, that's a very, very common thing, and I'll talk about how to avoid that in avoiding knockout section. Um, but generally speaking, its strengths are its priority, its ability to be charged, its exhausted recovery uh, has near unreactable startup, it's just incredibly fast, it gives you that extra boost of momentum, it can be used as a knockout tool, it means that Lance is very difficult to edge guard, um, and recovering into the wall is generally pretty safe, because you can get uh, priority stuff like that. Uh, how do you play against this move? Oftentimes, you don't. And a lot of the time when people get hit by Lance Recovery when they're trying to edge guard, for me, a lot of the time it's out of hubris. Like I'm just like, okay, let me, I'm, I'm gonna be able to hit this Lance Recovery before they hit me, and I'm gonna get the knockout, and it's gonna be a quick easy gimp, and we're gonna be fine. But then I get hit like 9 times out of 10. So a lot of the time when you're trying to contest Lance Recovery, the best thing to do is not to hit it during the move, but to try and punish it afterwards. Or punish their movement, what they do afterwards. So let's say the Lance player is doing something like this, they're recovering into the wall, and they might be out of jumps and you're like, if I just hit them right now, they would die, but you're not going to be able to do it because this recovery has so much priority. So instead, you know, instead of just trying to bash your head against the wall and punish this recovery, instead, try to like punish this tap off the wall that they're doing without realizing it after their recovery. Try and punish their jump after the recovery. Try and punish their panic dodge after the recovery. The same thing that I was saying about getting caught into the vortex of like these end lights and these down lights, you know, because oftentimes you find yourself in this situation where you whiff against a lance, and then they whiff, and then you're like, okay, okay, I can punish. And then you try and immediately attack, but they're there before you are. And so suddenly now you're stuck in this hip, this uh, this cycle of you just trying to attack, and you're trying to get back into the action over and over and over again, but you're just trapped in the vortex because they can attack faster than you. In those situations, you need to curb the impulse to just immediately attack and immediately get back into the action. Take 0.5 seconds, you know, a fraction of a second of time off to just interrupt the rhythm, disrupt their momentum, and that is enough to get out of the vortex. And it's the same thing with stuff like like just trying to punish this over and over and over again, and just to no avail every time you get hit by this. Take 0.5 seconds, realize that after they do this, they may do the same thing every time, and punish that one instead. So that's playing against recovery. Now let's talk about avoiding knockouts, because that's that's a very big thing about Lance. So 
One of the keys to playing against Lance is recognizing that their knockout power is limited to just a couple moves. Side air and recovery. These are their two main knockout tools. Side air is priority number one. This is this is the thing that you want to avoid at all costs. If you die to a lance on the ground by end light, that is totally okay. As long as you avoid the past like 30 side airs. Because side air has, it's like the earliest killing move that they have because they can push you into the corner. It's the most uh, consistent killing move that they have because of things like side light stair being a good string, uh, carrying you off stage, everything like that. So how do you avoid dying by side air? How do you do it? The simple answer is you don't jump because the fastest side air is just this. It's a rising side air. The slowest side air is a falling side air because they have to be in the air first. They have to go through this whole motion of falling and then positioning and then side airing. So if you stay grounded, if you don't panic jump, if you don't like just do this, they're not gonna be able to hit you with their fastest killing option. So if you stay grounded, curb the impulse to jump, suddenly the Lance player is gonna be uh, struggling a little bit because what can they do? Well, this move will never kill you. This move just puts you in the air. Like it, that move won't kill you. So they're gonna have to do something like an end light, uh, like a signature, or start doing falling stairs. And like I mentioned earlier, falling stair is when this move starts to be punishable. You know, like I said, there's often times when this move, you just can't punish this approach unless you have something like a bow end light or a spear down light or an ax down light. If you don't have moves like that, Oftentimes on reaction, you're not gonna be able to punish this side air. But what you can punish is this. If you space outside this side air, if you stay grounded, then if they start looking for this in kill percent, which they're going to have to, uh, unless they have like an amazing signature, or they have a great read on your movement, then you can start to punish their side airs. And the more you punish their side airs, the more afraid they're gonna be to throw out their side airs, and the more free that you can start to get with your jumps. So the whole idea is you wanna confine the Lance's kit to a certain area, because when they can just fly across the map all free and nair and be nair plane and be ser plane and be dare plane, they are controlling the match. But if you force them by your positioning to only choose certain options, because if they start doing this when you're on the ground, it'll never hit. So if you're on the ground and they're forced to side air like this, you're forcing their hand to do certain things, and then you can start to counter those certain things. Instead of worrying about 70 things, you can worry about like seven things, right? And so that's number one about avoiding stair. But sometimes you are put in the air, right? Sometimes you get nared, sometimes it's unavoidable. What do you do in those situations? Sometimes you need to jump, right? You need to avoid a signature. Well, stair has a limited amount of range. While it does have a great amount of movement, it doesn't have infinite movement, and the movement isn't extremely quick. Cannon moves a lot faster than Lance. So like Cannon's air, for example, spacing outside that range is a little bit harder. But Lance doesn't move the fastest in the air, meaning that if you're about this distance away, you know, and, and it depends on how you're moving, and dash makes a bit of a difference, but if you're about this distance away, this side air will not hit you, right? So space at this distance. Learn the spacing of side air, because it's deceiving. This side air right here, this will hit because I move into it, right? But this side air, because I, I'm right here, it won't hit. This spacing is critical to learn. This is so important. If you make the Lance player have to move into you, have to guess whether their stair will hit or not, you know, have to space around, have to move into you and then nair, you're limiting their options. If you're always in, your, in the red zone, in the range of where stair can hit you, then you always have to be worried about stair. If you're spaced just outside of their stair range, you never have to worry about stair. So yeah, those are, th those are two things to avoid knockouts. The other thing is that know when their, their uh, strings are strings and when their strings are actually combos. So side light into recovery is not a true combo. Side light into cider are not true combos. If you have your dodge up, you should be dodging these moves, especially if you're in kill percent. Because if you dodge these moves in kill percent, you're not gonna get hit by them at all. They will just completely miss you. But if you aren't dodging them, you're making Lance's job a lot easier. Because everything I just mentioned about Lance not being able to kill you as easily on the ground isn't true if they can sidelight you, right? Sidelight is one of the scariest moves in the game, or scariest grounded approaches in the game because of how far it reaches and how quick it is, but it can't kill. If you give it the ability to kill, it's that much scarier, right? So those are two things to keep in mind. Also, nares into a... Uh, into recovery, that's also not a not, not a true combo. You can dodge out of those, you can jump out of those depending on your positioning and stuff like that. Um, as for avoiding getting hit by recoveries when you're in kill percent, make sure you're not always holding in the same directions. A lot of time when people are recovering on stage, they tend to hold in the same direction uh, for the entirety of their, uh, until they land back on the ground with their jumps. And a lot of the time you can read that very easily if you just reverse something like that. Uh, so be aware if you notice a Lance player is just patrolling around this edge and reversing their recoveries, then uh, maybe you go around them. Maybe you go directly above them and hit them with a ground pound. Maybe you go like underneath them and stuff like that instead of always holding in the same direction. 
Um, one other thing that I want to mention is juggling. So how does Lance want to build up damage on you? Like, what is their easiest uh, path to building up damage to getting you in kill percent? It's juggling. It's just hitting you with nair after nair after nair, and then they don't have to worry about mixing anything up. They can only use one move, and then uh, you'll just be damaged, right? So how do you not get juggled? Well, there's a few things. Number one is that recognize that because of the movement of Lance Nair, uh, if you jump in the opposite direction of where people go, or if you jump directly up, they may not be able to catch you. So Lance needs to actually do different options to catch different jumps. So if you jump directly up or you jump super high, they can do this chase dodge nair up to hit you. Uh, if you jump to the left, they can do like a reverse nair to hit you. If you jump to the right, they can like follow your movement. So like they have options to cover where you go, but it's a guessing game. Like they, they have to do different things and one option won't cover everything. So mix up where you jump or mix up jumping at all. Maybe sometimes you fast fall. Maybe sometimes you immediately attack depending on what they do. Just mix things up and try out a lot of different things. Because if you always do one option, then you're always going to be hit by the, the one thing that beats that option. But if you suddenly have two options to pick from, well now, you don't get hit 50% of the time. If you have three options, you don't get hit 33% of the time. You know, that's, that's obviously, you know, not exact math. It, 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 all, it all depends on what the opponent picks and how they adapt. But just generally speaking, you want to have more tools in your toolkit. The last thing that I want to talk about is the Lance Gimp. You know, the classic. The dare into Sare, into dare into Sare. We've all been hit by it. But that Dusk didn't get hit by it. And you see why? Because you can actually jump out of it. So this Dare into Sarah Vortex, it is very scary. I've been hit by it. It can catch you off guard. It can catch you slipping. But you can actually jump out of it. So this Dare into Sarah, you see that? Dusk jumps. And so what does the Lance player do? They see, oh, okay, you're jumping out of it. And next time they hit you with the Dare, they do a Jump Sarah. And then they do a Jump Sarah. And then you die, right? So the thing about this Dare Sarah Vortex, the thing about the Lance Zero to Death, is that it's not, for one, it's not a zero to death. If you have your dodge up, you can get out of it. But if you don't have your dodge up and you're getting vortexed, there are opportunities and there are situations where you can jump. So let's say you jump right there and they read it. You're, you're kind of just toasted, right? They read you. And this is also small roll haven, which is one of the best maps to do it on. Um, but also, so something to keep in mind, you know, a little bit of a takeaway, a key part of escaping this, is after the down air, if they side air immediately and you do anything except for jump, you will get hit by it. If they side air and they do a dare immediately, like a chase dodge dare, like this, you can jump out of that and the thing that they have to do to counter it is do a jump stare and read your positioning and read your gonna, where you're gonna be. And after that jump stare, they're gonna have to do another jump stare and they're gonna have to do another jump stare. If you jump at the right timing, in this Lance Sare Dare Vortex, you can never get hit by the dare. Like theoretically, you could just never get hit by the dare. And never getting hit by the dare mean, means you never have to worry about dare and desire. And so what you're doing by jumping out of this string is you're essentially forcing the Lance player to guess when they can dare. Because they want to dare. Dare is one of the best moves in this vortex because that dare and desire, if you don't have a jump, is a, or if you don't have a dodge, is inescapable with anything but a jump. So. Jumping out of this is key. Recognize when you're getting hit by this. Don't just let go of your keyboard. Do what that Dusk is doing. Jump out of it, because then you won't be hit into the next portion of it, and the next portion of it, and the next portion of it. And now the Lance player has to guess when you're gonna jump. Maybe you mix up your timing, and maybe next time you don't jump at all. But because you showed them that you can get out of it the first time, they don't even go for it the second time. You see, like all these times that I'm missing it on this Dusk, it's because they're jumping out of it. Let's say next time they don't jump out of it, and they die, well, like that. Well, it is what it is, you know, sometimes it happens. Don't get too frustrated if you do fall into it, because it happens, I fall into it a lot. Sometimes your mental stack is overloaded, you're thinking about, oh, I can't get hit by this, I can't get hit by this, I need to mix up my jump so I don't get juggled, and everything like starts to stack up and it's too much and then you get landscaped. It happens, you know, it happens to everyone. But, you notice that Dusk? If they just jumped there, they would have gotten out of it. I guess the TLDR of uh, how to play against Lance. Try not to get Lance vortexed by, you know, stuff like this, and always trying to punish things that are unpunishable. And by unpunishable, I mean, you know, depending on your movement and your positioning, it's hard to get pun er, hard to punish. When in kill percent, avoid just loosely jumping in the air without intention. Make sure your jumps are intentional. Make sure your attacks are intentional, and make sure that you're spacing outside of the air range. Now something that I didn't mention that I went in depth on, or more in depth on in the Axe video, is throwing out attacks just for the sake of throwing out attacks. And I'll mention it very briefly here because it's important uh, for Lance as well. When in kill percent, Lance, are gonna, Lance users are going to be looking for stuff like this. They're going to want to bait you into throwing an attack and then staring you. So when they start to do that, try your hardest by, uh, by focusing, staying in the moment, being intentional with every decision you make, every jump, every attack, every dodge. Make it an active decision, not a passive one. Not something that you realize that you've done after you've already done it. Something that you've planned to do and you executed it because you wanted to. Because if you just immediately attack 
when you notice the the lance player getting close to you and then you get hit by this that's because uh I, I mean you may have gotten baited and sometimes you just get outplayed and it happens and sometimes you do get baited but you want to make it so you don't get baited every single time so if they're just floating above you like this make sure that you're not throwing an attack because you're terrified of them landing and then hitting you make sure you're throwing an attack because you think they're gonna get hit by this because of how i've spaced because of how i've moved because of how i've conditioned them and that makes their job harder. And that's what this is all about, right? Making their job harder. Getting juggled, like, I've, like I mentioned earlier, the TLDR. Mix up your jumps, mix up your movement. And the main thing, that uh, the main takeaway that I, that I want you to, uh, to have from this video, uh, to have from playing against Lance, is that Lance is one of the most free-flowing, freedom-soaring weapons in Brawlhalla if you let them. But if you box them in by positioning yourself in certain ways, like when they're on the ground, you stay in this 45 degree angle so that neither Nair, or Nair can't hit you and none of the grounded options can hit you, now they have to look for side error, they have to look for recovery. If you position on the ground in kill percent, they can't just throw these out and expect them to hit. If you position above them in neutral, they're going to have to go for Nairs. If you position far away from them here, they can't just throw out a Sire. A sire. So by positioning yourself, you can force the Lance user to picking various options that may make them uncomfortable. And the more uncomfortable they are, the more they have to play to your game. The more uncomfortable you are, the more you have to play to theirs. So there you go. There's the, uh, there's the very basic sandbox style crash course on how to beat Lance. Let me know which one you want to see next. These are uh, my voice is getting destroyed and that dusk just jumped completely out of that out of that recovery or out of that ground pound so yep there you go hopefully hopefully it was helpful hope you enjoyed also let me know some of your success stories if this helped at all or some of your failure stories like me just falling off the map like there right there uh because uh, i, I want to hear them uh, i want to see what you all have to say so yeah there we go i'll see you in the next one i'm kind of rambling so goodbye